And welcome back to New to the Street. I'm Janet Alvarez, your host here from the iconic NASDAQ market site in Times Square, New York. We're joined today by a very special guest. Dan O'Toole is the CEO of Arrive AI. Arrive Networks, of course, producing an autonomous delivery network with its specialized autonomous Arrive points. They're redefining the last inch of the last mile. Dan, welcome back. It's Great to see you, Janet. Again. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, I feel like you guys are at the forefront of so many things. And recently, you've come at the forefront of crypto as well. You've begun instituting Bitcoin for payments to your suppliers, to your employees. Tell us about this internal Bitcoin revolution. You're hey, doing. we're a high tech company. You got to stay on the cutting edge, right, Janet? Yep. So what we're doing is we're first trying with me. Uh, I'm going to be the first one to receive a portion of my pay in crypto, uh, specifically Bitcoin. We feel like it's tried and true. Uh, we think the trajectory is, is up and uh, we want to be a part of that revolution. So I'm excited about that. But beyond that, we want to we want to take payment. Uh, we want to give payment in crypto and Bitcoin. Uh, also, when we get to where we have spare cash on our balance sheet, we want to have that sitting in Bitcoin rather than just cash that's not you know performing. So a little bit like the micro strategy approach. Really exactly, exactly. Just got, got a picture with Michael Saylor here in the in New York this week, oh, pretty I have, cool. I have to see that picture, I'm sure that's yeah, like the face may, of the future. Maybe we can uh, show it here in this interview, okay. what do you think? Absolutely, I would love that. And you guys are launching an Arrive coin too, further fomenting this transition into crypto. Tell us about the Arrive coin, its application. You know, the Arrive coin is, we're not ready to really get into that just yet. Okay. We, we do see tokenization uh, in crypto as a part of our future, um, and I'm not, I want to get everything out there as quick as I can. People that know us know that. Of course. Just a little early to get into any specifics as we don't have everything really worked out at this point. But stay tuned because that's going to be exciting. We think that's going to be a big driver uh, of our company. Absolutely. So let's get down to business. Yeah. You have engaged in a $10 million share buyback program. What motivated that? What do you plan on doing with the cash? You know, what we want to do, uh, we believe in our stock, obviously. You can't ask people to invest in your company if you don't believe in it yourself, right? Mm -hmm. We feel that, you know, we're you know, forward-looking statements, all those things, right? Yeah. I'm highly bullish on my company. I think that, you know, we have a first position, position patent portfolio, very strong. We feel like our intrinsic value uh, is very strong. And at the levels that our stock is trading at right now, we, we want to buy our own shares. So we did announce a up to $10 million share buyback between now and the end of Q1 of 2026. We've already started uh, purchasing some shares. So uh, it's exciting. And you know, you got to put your money where your mouth is, right? Absolutely. So let's talk about your five-year plan. Yes. What is on your five-year plan? What are some of the key indicators, some of the key metrics that we should be looking forward to? You know, we want, in the absence of revenue, which we're low to no revenue right now, milestones are what we're focused mm -hmm. on, Janet. So, you know, our five-year plan concentrates on us having 100,000 units out in five years, uh, 10xing our valuation of the company, uh, and just really starting to deploy today. We feel like, uh, if you look at the, um, electric car industry, the charger network that everybody had their own end-to-end uh, -end solution, GM, Ford, Tesla, uh, there, that needed to be, there needed to be a standard created out there um, and that ultimately became the Tesla charging network. We feel like we're, that's us in the autonomous delivery space. You know, people are trying, trying to concentrate on their own end-to-end -end solution, but the idea of having multiple you know, boxes for delivery and shipping in front of a home or business is a non-starter. You need to have one uh, platform, that's Arrive AI, that can work with everyone. We've got all the intellectual property and patents around that, and we feel like we are going to be the, the Tesla network of uh, autonomous delivery. Now you're engaging in some significant expansion right now, increasing headcount as well. Tell us about this. Yeah, we are. You know, on one hand, we say we're tripling our workforce, but we're really we're 10 xing our W2 uh, workforce. We're going from six W-2 employees to 60 between wow. now and the end of the year. And it's a big lift. We're hiring people to hire people. So we, we're bringing in data scientists, AI engineers, uh, mechanical and electrical engineers, uh, sales. We're doing it all. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to take that next big leap. Of course, a company like yours has to be strongly focused on innovation. But of course, you have a fiduciary duty too to your shareholders. How do you balance those interests between maintaining that rapid pace of innovation while maintaining that responsibility. To you know what? Everybody that has put one dime into our company is a co-owner with me. Transparency, communication, 
Those are our core values. Every day that I go to work, I'm like, I want to be the boss that I want, would want to work for. I want our company to be, to be the company that I would want to work for. And I want this to be the company that I would want to invest in. And if you accomplish that, you're, that's, you're, you're doing great things. But uh, just staying in front of people, uh, every dime that's come into this company has been linear to development. We've always conducted ourselves as a public company for years, even before we went public. We had board oversight, uh, PCAOB audits, public company audits as a SOP, uh, and I'm really proud of that, and that's translated very well into us being out in the, on the NASDAQ now. How do you translate your value proposition to potential investors? Of course, our audience comprises so many potential investors who would have an interest in companies like yours. What do you say to them? I would say, if you looked at Amazon and missed out, if you looked at Nvidia and missed out, anything that you've ever looked at and you kicked yourself, we are right here in front of you right now, don't miss us. We are at the intersection of autonomy and AI, two of the biggest drivers in the market today. And when you invest in Arrive AI, you get both. You know, we're gonna change the delivery world forever. And it'll never be the same. And you're gonna wonder how it ever got along this long without us. And uh, this is the opportunity. It's in front of you right now. If you're watching this, this is a wake up call. Come on in, join me on our journey. A wake up call indeed, an amazing journey to be sure. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Janet, appreciate it. Dan O'Toole of Arrive AI communicates to us one of those fundamental stories about the American dream. The American dream is about innovation and transformation industries, and they are succeeding in doing that in the delivery industry. For New to the Street, I'm Janet Alvarez, here from the iconic NASDAQ Marketplace.